Hi everybody, my name is Travis Brandner and I am here with Deadman from Deadman String Band. Hola. Will you introduce yourselves to the people yourself to the people on the internet? Uh yeah. I'm Deadman. I am a walking corpse one man band from Cincinnati. That's pretty much all I got though. I don't remember much from my living days, so I don't got much. What does it mean to be in a string band? To, I'm not really sure what the definition is of a string band. Could you explain that? Well, it's definitely not what I do. Uh, <clears throat> this, a string band is essentially a, a group of musicians that uh, you usually have an acoustic guitar or a, maybe an arch top guitar, a double bass, banjo, mandolin, all strings. I am not that, but yeah, sometimes the name throws people off. I've done shows where... I can see people that are clearly dressed for the occasion of a bluegrass show, and they walk in, they see me, and they go, nope, right back out. So, uh, the name is deceiving. And that's my fault. I have seen you live one time, and I enjoyed it very much. I liked every song you played. Thank you. How hard is it to perform as a one-piece band and play drums and guitar and sing at the same time? Um, it's developed. It was, you know, I started out uh, with just a kick drum. <clears throat> once I got the hang of that, I added the snare drum. And once I got the hang, well, then I kind of wanted to add some Sonic shit. So, can I cuss on this thing? Good. Okay. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of that. Uh, I wanted to add some Sonic stuff, so I added a hi-hat. And then I figured out how to play the hi-hat, the kick drum, and the snare drum all together like a drum set with my feet. And then once that got easy, I added a crash symbol. So it was kind of just a progression thing. It wasn't, it's not quite easy per se, but I always say if I can do it, pretty much anybody can do it for sure. Do you kind of look at it as like one instrument? Yeah. Like just kind of blend your strumming with your stomping and it just kind of becomes like one motion? Well, the, the bottom, and this is gonna be a little technical, but the bottom three strings on my guitar actually go through a bass amp. So, and they go, they get tuned down an octave when they go into the bass amp. So when I'm playing, you actually are getting uh, guitar, bass, drums, and vocals all at the same time. So I'm usually playing the bass part with my thumb, and I'm doing the guitar parts with my fingers. Uh, but my feet, for the most part, are on autopilot the whole show. Usually every show is different. Uh, you know, like my feet are doing kind of the what they do for the song. But crash cymbals, snare fills, it's kind of like when I want to, when I feel to do it. And then my feet just kind of go on autopilot. I don't even think about it anymore. You have released one album. Yep. Can you, it was released last year. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that album? Yeah, it was called, well, <laughs> you know, it's called One. Very original of me. I don't think I'm Led Zeppelin. But, uh, <clears throat> and it basically does this, it's a concept album where the, it starts off and it does a whole storyline. There's dialogue where these kids get lost looking for a murder house. They stumble upon the old guy that resurrects me. And then the album continues on of me running amok. <clears throat> and at the end of the album, not to do any spoilers, but the uh, guy who resurrected me made a mistake, puts me back in a coffin, chains me up, puts me in an abandoned church, and I eventually break out. And... Hence, the second album will start on that part. When is the second album coming out? Have you written any of it? It's mostly written. Uh, I've yet to even decide where I'm recording it. The first album was actually recorded in a week in a basement and if, with uh, Josh Wickheiser of J.G. Wicky, Porter Indiana Man Production Studios. They're located in Indiana, right in Lawrenceburg. <clears throat> uh, if you ever need recording done, I would go to him for sure. Uh, but I have yet to... Uh, I've yet to decide where, when, but I, I'm kind of thinking maybe spring next year. Like, it's it's pretty much in the bag as far as, like, what I've written. Um, but it's also going to be co-released for sure with a 7-inch record that I found. There's an old warehouse. I found a bunch of my old records from the 30s when I was alive. And there's it, they're a little warped and they sound like shit, but I'm going to start selling those at shows when the second one comes out. 
Interesting. I look forward to hearing the old warped pieces of shit along with it. Aren't we all? You are a pretty hard person to look at sometimes. Um, the first time I ever saw you was at a show, and I don't know if you were playing, but you were walking around and you looked kind of like you did now, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to talk to you or walk the other direction. Well, I'm glad you did. And, I mean, well, you, you did walk the other direction. I did walk the other direction because I didn't know if I wanted anything well, to do with this. And for, he, what he isn't telling you is, folks, is uh, I fucking reek. I smell really bad. You don't want to be near me. It's terrible. So what the, the question was going to be is with the way that you look and you appear this way everywhere you go most of the time, um, what, can you, do you have any like funny stories of anything that have happened or any crazy reactions or just something that kind of comes to mind of when you've been dead man and some shit that has gone down? Oh, man, I have to think about that. Um... I've been stopped by the police <laughs> outside of a gig, um, <clears throat> like meeting people and signing stuff, and I've had the cops come up, and like in the winter time, if it's fuck, if it's cold out, I'll just wear a hoodie and have the mask on, and they just don't know what the hell to think about it. And um, I mean, people that come to see me the first time, they don't really know what to expect, and then. Typically, my local show is because when I'm home in Cincinnati, I like to take it a little bit easy. Uh, but my out-of-town shows, uh, they bring me out in a body bag. And it's a, it's a whole ordeal, and people don't know how to usually take that. They're like, okay. You know, they don't know what to do. But, yeah, it, it's it's been uh, many years of uh, crazy mixed reaction, for sure. But the music usually holds true. I usually say, this makes them go what the hell's going on but the music kind of keeps them there which i'm thankful for yeah i'd like to just kind of give you props like you have a lot going on with your aesthetic and everything but the music is legit thank you and it's not just about the look the music is fucking legit so good job on that thanks man yeah a lot of i'm not pegging a lot of one-man bands i know a lot of one-man bands that are just fucking excellent some of them do rely on gimmick or stick to get them through, you know, like lack of drums or lack of that. I actually, a lot of uh, one-man band, the charm of it is that you have a lot to interpretate, you know, inter interpret, <laughs> interpretate. What the fuck am I talking about? Interpret. And uh, you can kind of make up like, oh, I would think a bass guitar would be playing this, or I think the drums would be doing this, but the guy only has a kick drum, you know? And... Uh, you know, with me, there's no imagination. I'm like, oh, this is how the song sounds. It was supposed to sound this way. It can't sound any other way kind of thing. So I, I kind of take the charm out of it. <laughs> you are a touring band. You actually go places. You don't just play in Cincinnati. I rarely play Cincinnati. I love playing Cincinnati, but, you know, it is definitely a town. There's so many great venues and places to play that you can oversaturate the shit out of yourself. Really quickly, and you know, so I, I tour north a lot lately. I, I was touring south for a bit, I need to go back south, but I've been touring north a lot lately, so that's been kind of like my main hub. There's actually people, for some reason, Wisconsin's been messaging the hell out of me, so hi, Wisconsin, I miss you too. I haven't been there since June, and they're getting antsy. So that's basically what you would say about Cincinnati, is it's like an amazing city with amazing venues, but it is possible to play too many shows here if you're not careful? It depends. Uh, when it's something like this, you know, like there are certain bands you can go every day of the week and see, and you would love it every single time. Me, it's like you don't want to get... <clears throat> you know, you don't want me. You don't want me snorting soda and spitting on you every freaking night. It's just too much. It's kind of like you got to finesse it. Like uh, once a month, maybe. You know, kind of thing. See, so like your appearance to be more sparse. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's not because I don't like playing here. I really love it here. So it's that's definitely not a not a factor. I'm not trying to keep out of the city. Well, let's just put away all the other places you go to for a second and just talk about Cincinnati. Who are your favorite Cincinnati musicians, artists, people of that nature? Um, <clears throat> well, I do watch your stuff. And a lot of the bands that you've interviewed and a lot of the bands that they talk about are the bands that I would mention. And I've been thinking about it. And there's one that I have not heard, and they need to be known as Android 86 from Covington, Kentucky, which is right across the river here at Cincy. Um, Android 86 is just this insane three-piece kind of group. 
They, uh, they've always been friends of mine, and uh, it, it's nuts. You got a guitar player playing a kick drum, you got a marimba player playing auxiliary percussion as well, and then you got a bass, and the vocals are awesome. It's more towards the geared towards the indie indie rock folk realm, uh, but they're great. I would always say Jay Dorsey Band. They've had my back <laughs> day one. Ever since I met him, man, we've been best friends. Uh, go, go, Buffalo. By the way, boys, I still have your doll. I don't know if you remember that. I, I kidnapped with their doll. I've been meaning to have like a epic battle with them, but we have not had the same schedule, so we're still figuring that out. I know Jeremy is getting antsy about it. He Let's wants burn it. He, he wants <laughs> I'm not that mean to people's property. <laughs> not yet, at least. No, I like Jeremy. I like Gogo. And I went in on this boxing thing. I want to box. Like, will, will Tyler box me? I want Tyler to box me. Let's let's make that happen. Okay. Anyway. Or Graham. Or Graham. It was I don't think I would do. I don't think I would face Jeremy. I, I don't know. I just I don't. I don't really strong. No, I just like he's so huggable. I just couldn't hit him. I couldn't do it. I, I don't know if I could hit Tyler either or Graham, but I, I think it's more doable with those two. I couldn't hit Jeremy though. There's just no way. <laughs> Anything you want to say to everybody before we wrap this up? <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> I do have a few upcoming shows here in town. I'll be doing a kind of a hair metal uh, 80s headbanging tribute thing on the 1st of October called the Headbangers Ball. It'll be a short set. It's like 15 minutes. Just doing a couple shows, songs. Um, but I will also be appearing uh, at Iron Fest this year, which I am stoked about. Second year in a row. And uh, it's one of my favorite times of the year. Like some of the, like it is the best, like the best of the best bands you're gonna get around here and surrounding areas in one night, cheap as hell, three stages. It's Southgate House Revival. There's just no beating that show. It's it's insane. So go to Iron Fest and wait for your record next year. Yeah, and like this guy on Facebook, and then go like me on Facebook if you haven't already. Do that. Deadman, thank you for hanging out with me. You're very, very, very welcome. If you want to listen to Deadman, go to his Facebook. It's pretty easy to find. If you want to see more interviews like this, go to my website, www.travisbrander.com. See you guys later.